Uh, good morning uh, to Professor uh, Eli Kramer and good morning to all uh, uh, the attendants. Uh, um, now we are here uh, with the, uh, the Professor Eli Kramer. It's a big uh, pleasure for me and a big honor to have you here uh, in preview of the Italian Congress uh, uh, of uh, the Italian uh, Society for uh, Behavioral and Cognitive uh, Therapy. Uh, that will be on September uh, from uh, 21st to 23 uh, of uh, September this year. Uh, Wally Kramer is a private docent, uh, uh, psychotherapy researcher and clinical psychotherapist in the Department of Sakai at the University of Lausanne. And he also holds an adjunct appointment at the Department of Psychology, University of Windsor in Canada. But he also uh, past president of European Society for Psychotherapy Research uh, and the president uh, uh, of uh, European Society for the Study of Personality Disorders. Um, he is also associate editor of the Journal of, of Behavioral and Cognitive Therapy and the Journal of Psychotherapy Integration. Uh, this presentation uh, is not enough uh, for uh, uh, Professor Kramer that uh, it's uh, a, a great uh, clinical uh, psychotherapist uh, and researcher in this area. And uh, uh, this presentation uh, uh, confirmed that his interest uh, is uh, on uh, um, three topic uh, and three area uh, that we share since a long time, uh, behavioral and cognitive th uh, therapy, the personality disorder, psychotherapy integration, and we have also uh, um, an we share uh, an interest in the topic of uh, uh, therapeutic relationship. Uh, we have considered that uh, his research focused on process and outcome in psychotherapy, in particular, um, focus on mechanism of change in treatment of personality disorders from a neurobehavioral perspective and just case formulation in personality disorders as will be the, the topic of his speech in, uh, in Bari. Uh, uh, welcome, uh, Welly. I think that it's enough this presentation. Uh, you have a, a lot of interest uh, and we know of uh, Hmm. how you are uh, passionate uh, about uh, this uh, and competent about uh, this uh, all this topic. Uh, so we have this uh, uh, brief interview uh, because uh, um, Welly uh, will be uh, have an interest and uh, he, he edit a book about case formulation of personality <laughs> disorders because uh, I think that uh, um, the problem in this period, uh, it's a, a real crisis uh, on the nosographic paradigm. I think that uh, uh, DSM and the ICD that we also use uh, for the diagnosis uh, uh, don't help uh, us to, uh, to project uh, and to plan our uh, treatment uh, sometimes. And uh, often uh, we have complex cases uh, because we have an overlap of the diagnosis. So I think uh, uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, at least uh, one of the um, matter the, uh, for which uh, case formulation is so important. Uh, I ask now to you, why you think that case formulation uh, is uh, uh, so important, in particular in personality disorders, but I think uh, in all the disorders. Uh, uh... Um, voglio ringraziarti. Uh, è, è molto grande piacere per me di venire a Bari. Uh, and I will, change, I will change into, into English. Uh, so thank you for this uh, very nice introduction, uh, Nino. And um, so case formulation, and I look forward to coming to a body in September. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, case formulation is, um, you know, just a, an essential step of any good psychotherapy, I would say. And uh, it could be you know, mostly important for patients who are, who present with this big, uh, important heterogeneity you're talking about, right? When there's a lot of symptoms, a lot of different manifestations that go in different directions, 
that um, uh, clinicians don't understand from the get-go. So then it may be advantageous to actually, um, you know, go into the depth of the understanding. However, it is, there is research showing, and you know that from even from the 1960s and 70s, showing that when you present cl clinical material to uh, even seasoned and ex expert therapists, uh, you could actually think that more information would give more precise formulations, but it's not the case. More information gives clinicians more confidence, but doesn't increase necessarily the precision of their formulations. So here we are. Therapists get more and more, more confident about what they think about their clients, but not necessarily more precise. So this, of course, uh, has led um, therapists and research and theoreticians to think very profoundly about how we should uh, think about our cases. It's not enough to just have an approximate theory. It's good to actually have a, a good method uh, that's also anchored in research that uh, we can use and maybe for some cases, one method would be more important and more adequate. And for another case, depending on the makeup of the case, another method may be more um, appropriate. So this speaks to the heterogeneity of the case. It's been very complex presentations of the cases. Um, so uh, sometimes one method is not enough. It's sometimes good to combine different perspective, different lenses, and you mentioned psychotherapy integration, different lenses on the same patient. And how do you think it's important to share the case formulation with the patient that, that I think it's uh, uh, so important uh, for the uh, building of the therapeutic alliance? What do you think? <clears throat> there are, I would say, two possibilities to use case formulation. You could actually use it explicitly and actually, you know, say, you know, these are the things I, uh, these are the links I make when I think about your problems, your patient, right? And actually discuss, have a discussion with the patient. This is a more explicit use. There's also an implicit use, which is, uh, which can be used to disconfirm what the patient is expecting from the therapy relationship, how it could evolve and how it could, you know, happen, how the inter any interaction could happen. And here, there's also implicit um, <clears throat> relationship building that the therapist, uh, where the therapist can use information from his or her formulation to uh, anticipate relationship ruptures or yeah. pair them and so forth. And do you think uh, that uh, is there any quick and simple way to do case formulation? So uh, Marvin Goldfield would answer, just use my staircase. This is uh, <laughs> when I presented the book you mentioned earlier in uh, at the uh, Society for the Exploration of Psychotherapy Integration in 2018. That was just a year before it was published. Uh, we had this distinguished discussant, uh, Marvin Goldfield. Yeah, we were a couple of colleagues from the book uh, who presented our research and our uh, case formulation methods, and that's what he said. He said, "You know, why? Why have, do you have all these complicated methods? I have a very simple method. It's staircase. Maybe you know it. It's analyzing, putting into very easy to, to see boxes of okay. phenomena. Staircase S is situation. T is." Um, Sorry, I just need to see that the aspects of uh, thought. Yeah. A is affect, of course. I is intention. R is response or uh, behavioral response. Um, and then there's consequence uh, and uh, self evaluation aspect. So just a few pieces, and you actually grasp um, the uh, uh, elements. Of course, what's missing. I would say is the links between them. And uh, one of the methods I've been presenting in body is the plan analysis, which is a method yeah. I've been using a lot for clinical purposes, but also research. And uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, mm, the variables uh, uh, to use uh, for the case formulation depends from the uh, theoretical approach uh, and the uh, aim that you have for psychotherapy, what do you think about? 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so case formulation um, also as Tracy Eels in his recent handbook of uh, case formulation defines it, brings together the theoretical um, background from yeah. the psychotherapy and yeah. actually the clinical case, right? So it kind of makes a, a synthesis between the two. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, the clinical theory, the therapist brings in, let's say, cognitive theory uh, would, um, you know, to some extent influence what you perceive and what links you would focus on in your case formulation, of course. So mm -hmm. there is, for example, um, uh, schema focused therapy uh, case formulation or behavior, cognitive behavioral therapy case formulation or a dialectical behavior therapy case formulation, but also, of course, other, um, other uh, types of um, family-focused uh, formulation and support. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's important that case formulation, uh, we use, uh, as you say, uh, in a way that uh, um, could be important uh, for the process, uh, uh, process and and, that, and outcome in psychotherapy. Do you think that uh, it's possible to have an impact on, on these variables, uh, and it's possible to measure? Mm -hmm. uh, there are some research about this. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, the the evidence is actually mixed. Uh, if you ask the question, if the um, there's an impact of yeah. doing a case formulation if that has an impact on the process and outcome. Um, there is few studies showing that it doesn't have an impact. It's kind of, you know, good therapy is always, there's always some kind of formulation. It's kind of the symbolization process the therapist is engaging in. So this is not something that can be improved or, and other research, including ours, has actually shown that there are small to medium-sized effects if you add case from specific case formulation methods, in particular for patient presentations, which are quite complex that involve, for example, diagnosis of personality disorders. Um, so in this field, um, my also experience as a psychotherapist has been that um, it is advantageous for just to you know, understanding, uh, synthetic understanding, but also to, to know which relationship aspects are important, what to prioritize, prioritize in the treatment, but also really for the symptom changes that, um, that case formulations are, can have an impact on all these variables. That's my, that's my uh, experience also. Our research actually shown that um, we can uh, translate variables from case formulation that are actually ideographic variables, right? It's uh, mm -hmm. very, very personal, personalized variables. We can translate them into uh, rating scales, such as uh, measuring personality constructs, such as um, agreeableness. And these constructs then predict the session by session um, evolution of the therapeutic alliance. And it also predicts the outcome uh, and mostly the um, nonverbal parts uh, of the therapist interventions uh, when he focuses uh, on uh, some of the patient's as patient presentations, relationship with the case formulation. So there is research really showing that there is um, a consistent impact on process in, in, in complex cases. Mm -mm. And in particular, I do think that there's a way uh, to have a sort of guideline to choose a method or another method to... Uh -huh. Yes. Well, well, in the book, uh, you mentioned uh, in the discussion, we tried with authors uh, of the book, it's an edited book, yeah. uh, we tried to come up with a guideline like that uh, in terms of uh, personality dimensions. Yeah, you know, today, I mean, the field is moving towards dimensional construct of personality and personality disorders, and we used the uh, alternative model of personality disorders of the DSM-5 yeah. at the time to um, cross it with um, uh, seventeen different models of case formulation, and we came up with uh, the best case formulation that actually attends, let's say, explains antagonism 
or the best case formulation that explains emotion dysregulation or the best uh, case formulation method that tackles uh, identity problems. So this is a uh, this is a way to you know just a, a heuristic that can be used if you if you're not sure um, uh, you know if you have some kind of idea where what type of patient you have but you're not sure which case formulation would be most uh, most potent in your case. We can say that the case that the case formulation depends uh, from the uh dimension uh, psychopathological dimension that to think it's uh, at the basis of the personality pathology for example for me that uh, you know i'm a metacognitive interpersonal therapist uh, the met metacognition uh, is the mechanism uh, of yes. change principle for personality disorder and the psychopathological variables uh, uh, at the basis, uh, dysregulation for DBT, uh, emotional yes. dysregulation, and, and so on. Uh, you think that it's a, a, a good way to uh, for, for the integration, the case formulation, because I think that sometimes uh, we use the term integration, but it's not clear what we are integrate. We are integrate theory, we are integrate uh, technique, we are uh, integrate um, what? Uh, yes. You know? Yeah. Uh, yes. Paradigm. Yes. Uh, and so sometimes integration uh, is not uh, a, a through integration, but an eclectic approach uh, that can can create a sort of confusion in therapies and to plan treatment. What do you think? Maybe I, I, I agree. Yeah, it can it can be confusing. I mean, there's so many theories. There's over five hundred psychotherapy theories uh, that are you know in in manuals and there's probably more every year that come out of some kind of combination and this can be confusing particularly if you start as a trainee to really dig into this field um and, but there are principles i mean uh, very early in the field also goldfried has laid out yes. some principles uh, which are you know different aspects that should be there in any good therapy such as um, uh, pr proposing a relationship uh, raising expectations in, in uh, adequate ways and realistic expectations for change hope um, uh, re reality testing increasing of insight and so forth so there's different aspects that are uh, relevant probably to any psychotherapy. Um, case formulation is probably because it is really already by itself integrating the, yeah. the, the theory with the practice is by itself an integrative activity, but it goes through the activity of the therapist actually. So it's a new focus. It's also in line with newer research, looking at what the therapist is doing, what it, what's going on in the mind of the therapist and how does that translate in therapist actions, right? So I think that's a little new twist, I think, uh, how uh, case formulation uh, methods can support newer research and also newer integrative uh, ways of working with clients. Clear, clear, I agree. And the... Um... Uh, maybe you already said this uh, something about this, but I want to ask you if uh, uh, why do you think uh, it's uh, so important, or if you think that it's uh, particularly important for personality disorder, specific for personality disorder case formulation. Uh, once is the overlapping of the diagnosis, maybe, but uh, do you think there are other meta? So, so see, I, I, um, I assume that patients with personality disorders come in with expectations that are particularly chronic no. and hurtful to their own uh, well-being. Very, very strict and rigid anticipations of uh, what is going to happen in an interaction, right? So these are really the rigid schemas or the maybe defaults in uh, you know problematic metacognition and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. But these are basically what well, everything this is schemas. These are predictions. Predictions of, about what is going to happen in the next interaction, right? Mm -hmm. um, a therapy and, and they are very very individual. 
there are, there are blueprints from their traumatic experience of what happened in their life previously, right? Um, so uh, a therapist who is just using his technique, it doesn't really symbolize and has though has no clear, really individualized understanding of these predictions a patient brings into the therapy relationship with him or her, the therapist, misses the essential, I think, of what is going on and what this patient really needs in terms of psychotherapy. Okay, uh, well, I think the, the, it's, uh, the, uh, this topic, uh, uh, it's uh, so complex uh, that we have to have more deep yes. in, uh, in Bari, we can, uh, yes. we can do it. This Con is piacere. an announcement. <laughs> e, è un mio piacere, sarà un piacere di tutti i soci della Società di Terapia Cognitiva. E ricordo, I remember that, uh, uh, well, he's also the editor of the book, Case Formulation for Personality Disorders, uh, with a significant uh, subtitle tailoring psychotherapy for individual client. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a way to move uh, from uh, uh, the research for specific uh, specific diagnosis uh, guideline for borderline personality disorder, for narcissistic personality disorders. Uh, uh, we have patients uh, with uh, maybe not only this problem, so is a uh, particularly important to tailor the treatment uh, for that patients. Yes. And um, uh, Welly will help us uh, to plan uh, the treatment using the case formulation uh, in an approach, in uh, using an approach uh, uh, that can be a, a good dress uh, for each uh, of, uh, per, for each therapist. And uh, for each therapist uh, together with the patient uh, to build uh, a useful uh, therapeutic alliance. Okay. Uh, Welly, thank you really uh, very much. Uh, you are so clear and uh, we see in uh, Bari in September. Ci vediamo. Ci vediamo a Bari. Ciao, grazie. Ciao. Ciao.